Hi, I'm Josh Martin, the Technology Sales Manager at Eminent Speaker. We're on location today in Shelbyville, Kentucky at the First Baptist Church. They called us a couple weeks ago telling us that they had some tweeters in their mains in their youth room that were blown, so we came out to replace those for them. But we also wanted to take the opportunity to install Defend in their system in hopes that they would never have that problem again. You can watch a separate YouTube video where we've replaced those tweeters and installed the Defend if you'd like to learn more about that. We also wanted to take the opportunity while we were here to protect their subwoofer in the youth room as well. Now what they have is the Mackie SWA-1501. It is an active subwoofer, but in this instance they've had to remove the internal amplifier and are now using an external amplifier. So what we want to do is go back to the computer, program the Defend unit so that we can protect this subwoofer and hopefully they will never have any problems with it. Okay, here we are back at the computer and we want to go ahead and program the Defend SA300 for the Mackie uh, SWA1501 subwoofer. So when we pull up the programming, the first thing we come to is a Terms and Conditions page. We will accept those and hit the button that says Start Program with Wizard. Under Enclosure Type, we know this is a subwoofer, so we select that. Under Enclosure F3 is 45 Hz for this subwoofer. It's an 8 ohm enclosure and it's 500 watts. RMS power rating. We'll hit the calculate button and the wizard will go ahead and calculate the settings for us based on that information. So the next thing to do is to hit the continue button. You'll get a prompt window that will come up to tell you that the settings are now being loaded into the main defend form. You'll select OK. And there they are. Now they're in the, the main defend form and where we would like them to be. One thing that you will notice is that, that all of the boxes are enabled as far as the high frequency, the all pass, and the low frequency. One thing that we would recommend doing for a subwoofer is to just disable the high frequency protection. You don't necessarily need that. It won't hurt anything if you leave that on, but I'm just going to disable it for this particular application. And then also you'll notice for the all pass, you may be thinking, well I'm protecting a subwoofer so I just need to protect from the lower frequencies. That's true that, that we do want the protection for low frequency peaks where mechanical failure can occur, but one of the things that often causes failure in subwoofers are those frequencies that do not cause mechanical failure, but over long durations can cause thermal failure, so you actually have the burning out of a voice coil. So we want the all pass settings to work as well so that it can watch for those long term conditions and hopefully prevent that thermal failure. So once we have all of that, we, we like our settings where we've got them, we want to go ahead and, and connect the Defend SA300 using the USB cable. And then we simply hit the connect button. You'll see the progress bar go across the bottom of the screen. A window will come up and say, do you want to overwrite the workspace settings? We want to hit cancel because we've used the wizard to get these settings, so we don't want to overwrite them. And now it, it, the easiest thing to do is just send our new settings into the Defend SA300. So we will hit the Computer to Defend button. And it says this operation will overwrite those settings and we hit OK. And we also get a warning window that comes up to tell us do not disconnect the USB cable while the program is downloading or it might cause firmware damage. So we select OK. We now see in the information window it says coefficient readback pass, so we know that our information is there. And you can also see in the top left hand corner of the software that it says the word sync, so you know that what is on the screen is the same thing that is programmed to your unit. So now that we've got this all programmed, it's time to go hook it up and see what we have. Okay, so we've listened to the settings that the wizard recommended for the first time, and we've listened to the subwoofer, and it, it sounds okay, but we think that it can handle a little bit more power, that we can set the protection a little bit higher, so we want to go ahead and, and reprogram the Defend unit and just bump up the protection just a little bit to allow for a little bit more audio content to go through. So the first thing we want to do is connect the Defend unit with the USB cable and hit the Connect button again. You'll see again in the left hand corner that it says sync, so we know that we are um, in sync with one another here. 
Now what we we'll want to do is I'm going to leave for the time being, I'm going to leave the all pass protection exactly where it's at because like I said, it's still watching for those long term thermal conditions at a voltage that may not be suitable. So the only thing that I'm going to bump up is I'm actually going to bump up the low frequency protection. You'll notice in the Defend software that you have a drop down window where you can select between volts and watts. I know a lot of engineers like to use volts, but a lot of end users like to use watts and since watts is something that people are most familiar with. We'll go ahead and do this section using the watts. Well, we look down here at our low frequency and, and we see the 242 watts is what we were allowing to go into the subwoofer when it comes to a peak condition. I'm going to raise that up just a little bit. So I'm going to say 300 watts is probably a safe place to be based on that. Now one thing that I want, want you to notice is that when you put in a number, there's something that happens often and it is there's some rounding that is done to the number that you enter. For instance, I, I put in 300 watts and it rounded my setting to 288 watts. And the reason that happens is because of the, the processor that we have inside the unit and the wide range of uh, power that we're trying to cover. So there will be a little bit of rounding. It gets you in the ballpark and gets you close. And the thing to remember is this is for protection and you do want the speaker cabinet to play as much as it can without without being damaged and this will get you very very close to that so what we want to do is go ahead and send our new settings into the defend unit so we click the computer to defend button it says the operation will overwrite that we say okay and we know that we will not unplug the unit while it's downloading Again, in the information window, coefficient read back pass, we have the word sync again up in the top left hand corner. And so now we'll unplug it, take it up and plug it into the subwoofer and see what we have. So here we are back up at the subwoofer with the Defend unit. We have the settings in there that we like. We've listened to the audio content. There's much more punch to the bass, which is exactly what we want here in the youth room. But it also is protected in such a way that they'll never have to replace this bad boy again. So that's what we've got going on with this. If you'd like to see some other videos with the Defend technology, specifically the ones we've done here in Shelbyville, you can check out the videos where we've protected the main speakers and also the floor monitors. If you'd like more information on Defend, you can go to defend.net or to eminence.com.